Hey YouTube and my fans, so a few years ago I got this Buckmaster, I think it was my 49th birthday present uh, from me to me, and I recently turned 52, so I decided to get its um, companion, the M9. So we'll have a quick look at those uh, now. Recap on the Buckmaster. This is uh, an awesome little survival knife created by Buck. Uh, in the early 1980s, very Rambo inspired, with its saw back and uh, these weird things that could only be described as a grappling hook, even though Buck said it was not intended for climbing. So, a uh, pretty cool piece of engineering nonetheless, and it was one of those knives that I absolutely always wanted, and so... Um, when I found one at a right price, I bought it. A few years later, they did the M9 bayonet. Now, this is not a Buck bayonet, which surprised me a little bit because I thought Buck had won the contract for three years. This is actually, and if you can see it, uh, it's a Frobus. Frobus 3 M9. Um... So, as I understand it, Buck did consumer versions or civilian versions, and Frobus made a military version. And what separates pretty much a military from a civilian version is on the civilian version, on the Buck, there was a big uh, sticker here, label, that basically was a warning to watch your fingers around the wire cutter. And as you can see, it's not there. In fact, what is here is a handwritten 201. And that would actually be a military store issue. So, um, they've, whoever's uh, had this knife, um, I believe it was actually Australian Army, has issued, uh, probably had all of them and just numbered them to, to keep track of, um, of their stock. So this knife, it's um, it's quite cool. It's a bit lighter, a fair bit lighter than the the Buckmaster. Same blade dimension, seven and a half inches by one and a half, about quarter inch thick. Though it is a bit thinner than the than the uh, the Buckmaster, I would have to say if the Buckmaster's six and a half, this would be closer to only five mil thick. Should probably get the calipers. Um, anyway. What I did notice was that the, the finish on the bayonet attachment, uh, both the front and the rear, is it's quite rough. It's uh, almost like this has been stamp pressed out, not machined. Um, both these parts, these are all, yeah, you've got the little, the little telltale marks when they, they stamp it out. I'm pretty sure when I used to see the Buck, uh, the Buck M9 in a sports store that it was um, smooth machined parts. So obviously the cost. There's also um, surface grinding marks on this blade. Although oh, I can see a few on the Buckmaster as well. The Buckmaster is generally... Um, it's awesomely finished, really, really smooth. The Frobus uh, M9 is a little bit rough around the edges, but it's still very, very cool. And it's, um, so Buck had the contract for three years, and then I believe it was a Spanish company called Martino that took it over after that, and then they completely changed the design. So this one has that file type serration as opposed to a sawtooth, and if you look at a modern M9, they've actually got sawtooth. Um, the wire cut is an interesting thing. It is designed to work on scabbard in a scissor-like motion, and um, is supposed to cut barbed wire and everything else the um part of the the reviews that i remember reading for the uh 
specs on this thing was it was supposed to be able to be drop tested uh, four foot drop test on the concrete uh, and if it failed that it wasn't supposed to be put into service just looking at this carefully on the tip I think this has failed its drop test and it's been reprofiled it also and I measured it before it's a little bit shorter than the seven and a half inches so highly probable that it had a piece missing and they've reprofiled uh, nonetheless, still a cool piece to add to my collection, and uh, this makes the uh, the 80s survival knife from a commercial manufacturer almost complete. The only other knife that I really, really want to get is a Gerber BMF. Uh, I already have an LMF, and I'd like to get the BMF. I think that'd be um, Pretty rocking piece to finish off that set. Um, the 80s certainly gave us some interesting designs, and um, it's just good to have them now. So, again, I bought this off eBay, um, cost about half the price of what I pay for the Buckmaster, but um, very, very cool uh, thing to own. So, just quickly, the sheath is pretty much the same injection molded plastic there's no buck on this i can't remember if the buck units actually had buck or whether that's it's almost like those two holes for the lanyard is what they've used yeah it is they've put the screws through for the uh, wire cutting attachment and then you've got your like the Buckmaster, you've got a sharpening stone underneath a flap. Um, Velcro attachments for your um, pouches. What they've done a step further over the Buckmaster. Buckmaster has the fast X clip for quick removal from a belt. They've gone a step further. They've added one of these. Um, I think they call it. The Anchi clip for Alice or Alice clip for um, attachment to your webbing, and then they've added a fast X which completely removes that so that you can use this uh, sheath along with the knife for the wire cutter uh, completely away from the, your belt or, um, or pack. Pretty neat. Um, both civilian and military versions have pretty much identical. Except those small details that I mentioned, uh, the main one being the warning logo. So there it is. I'm going to wrap this up. That has been uh, my latest uh, store bought or store made, whatever factory made uh, knife purchase. And uh, so I'll uh, wrap it up there for now. Thanks for watching.